Hi there and welcome to this quick dev update for Strider. In this dev update, we're going to look at the foot locking node, which is going to be coming soon. This foot locking node is also going to be included with Motion Symphony and maybe even as a standalone. However, the foot locking node I'm showing you is currently in beta. It has been uploaded to GitHub. Um, so if you have access to the repository there, um, then you can test it out now. Now this is only for testing. It is only a beta. Do not rely on it. I make no guarantees whatsoever. So um, only use it if you want to see what's going on. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration before I show you how the node is actually set up. Now I have disabled foot locking on this character and we are going to run forward. And you might not be able to see the foot sliding too much because we're going a bit fast, but let me turn on slow-mo to about 20%. And you'll see as we run, as the foot plants, it slides forward on the ground because the character is moving faster than this animation was designed to move. And this can be a problem, especially when we change things up. Uh, if we make this very slow or even faster, the foot sliding is going to get even worse. Now we can use foot, foot locking to help fix this. It's procedurally lock the foot in place once it's grounded so that it doesn't move in world space. Obviously, there are some limitations. You can't, you know, you don't want to hyperextend the leg and such. Um, but there are, you know, there is a point where you need, you have to let the foot slide. I just realized that this animation isn't looping properly, but that's beside the point. It's got nothing to do with the uh, um, the plugin. So let me enable the foot locking node. And you'll see here that as the foot hits the ground, it gets locked in place. And it looks like the character's stride gets a little bit longer. It may look a little bit strange um, in some ways, but if we put it up to full speed, so if I go slow-mo back up to one, it looks a lot better. Now this works as well if we make the character slower. So let me just change the character's speed here to uh, you know something really low like 100. So this is obviously a very extreme case. You wouldn't be using a run animation when um, going this slow, but I'm showing you an extreme case to make a point. So you can see here that the foot's getting locked and even though we're moving really slow, it's not really sliding. You might see a little bit of sliding at the middle, but that's really just where I put the animation notifiers. You could tweak that a little bit. Um, let me show you the debugging nodes so you can get a better idea. So I'm going to put the debugging on to one and we can see the debugging nodes. Let me make this faster again because um, it's a bit easier to see. So I'll just make, uh, it's right up here. We'll make the default speed 600 again. It's a little bit faster than the animation goes. And we have our debugging nodes here. Um, I will put it in slow-mo again, 0.25. So these yellow balls are the place where the foot gets grounded and then locked. Um, once the ball goes orange, the lock starts to get blended out. Now the lock doesn't get released instantly because then the foot would snap back. Rather, it gets blended out so the foot goes back to its original position in the animation um, smoothly. And you can see that the legs don't suddenly snap forward once they come off the ground. Um, now there's also hyperextension, a uh, way that hyperextension is, has been stopped. And there's two different methods you can choose. This particular method pushes the foot towards the, its uh, corresponding thigh to make sure that that leg doesn't extend more than you want it to be. And that is customizable. And you can see here the blue is where the original foot position would be and the green is where the foot locked position is. So you can see as soon as it's locked, the um, locked foot position starts to stray from its original position and then it blends back into it once it's off the ground. I'll show you the other technique that is used to stop hyperextension and you can choose which one you want to use for that. But you get the idea. Now foot locking can be used for a lot more than just preventing foot sliding, but that's the main reason why I've made it for motion matching because motion matching has a lot of issues with foot sliding, uh, but there are heaps of different ways you can use it. So I have made it to be very much a tool in the toolbox, like all Strider nodes, and I will show you that now. So again, yes, it's a tool in the toolbox. It does what it says on the tin, nothing more, nothing less. It's not going to automatically, magically take away your foot sliding. Um, 
so let me just show you here we've got a simple node it's got a boolean input for left and right foot lock and how you set these locks or when you set the locks is totally up to you i use animation notifiers and i'll show you that in a bit but you could use it other ways for some techniques you would maybe use animation curves um, for the technique of preventing foot sliding you do kind of need to use atom notifiers because it can only be um, based on the animation with the highest weight otherwise you have the same problem where blending animation muddies the water and that's what causes the foot sliding and motion matching to begin with um, so let me just have uh, show you how this kind of works obviously we've got the two leg ik nodes so the leg the leg ik is being run on separate nodes this is just figuring out where that ik position needs to be there's a few options here as i said there's two ways to fix hyperextension you can move the foot towards the thigh or you can move the foot under the thigh so it doesn't move it up it just moves it forward now both of these have their advantage moving it towards the thigh makes it feel like if the character is actually going faster it, their stride kind of gets bigger as well it makes it look like they're running faster but you may have noticed that um the ankle angle when the foot starts to come off the ground looks a little bit funny so it's really up to you um, i'll show you quickly how it looks with foot under the thigh uh here we go so you can see the stride doesn't get much bigger and the foot stays locked um the foot basically just it just gets let slide so i'll go slow-mo 25 percent you can see the foot just gets locked and then it's allowed to slide once it's once it starts reaching that point of hyperextension it just like it just slides and this is a trade-off you have to make because you know if you lock it perfectly it's gonna just hyperextend so let me show you the other settings so yeah that's totally up to you how you want to which method you want to use there um, there's also this option here allow leg extension ratio um, so this is how we control how much we allow the leg to extend based upon its current, uh, you know, current extension in the actual animation pose. So if you say zero, then the leg is not allowed to extend any more than the base animation pose. It can be sort of rotated, so it's, you know, angled a bit differently, but it won't be allowed to extend. I like to let a little bit of extension, so 50% more towards um, full extension. Uh, it won't let you go to full extension. It'll only go to 0.99. That's because we don't ever want to fully hyperextend. It'll cause issues with the IK. So we get up to that point. I generally like, you know, 0.5. So we allow the leg to extend a little bit. Um, how do I explain this? I've said here 50% allowed leg extension. That's 50% of the remaining leg extension possible between the current pose and fully extended. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. It seems to be a way that I've come to do leg extension in all of my nodes. And um, it feels the most dynamic because, um, you know, setting a fixed uh, while you're allowed to extend, you know, 30 degrees. Well, that is not going to, that's going to be a problem. Uh, in some cases, it'll allow it to hyperextend. Anyway, that aside, here we have our options for smoothing. I've said 0.3 seconds to smooth that lock. So once that lock comes off, it takes 0.3 seconds to smooth back to the pose position. Next, we have body de definition. We have two limb definitions, right foot and left foot. Now, this is only for the beta, but for the final version, I'm probably just going to have an array of foot definitions, or rather limb definitions. I should probably rename that. Um, so we can define how many legs uh, you know, we want to consider with locking. And in this case, you can see I've just got left foot and right foot. We specify the foot bone, which is actually the ankle, uh, the toe bone, which is the ball of the foot and the IK control. Now, the reason we have the toe here is because we're actually locking the toe. We're not locking the foot, the ankle, because we get grounded and it's the ball of our toe, uh, the ball of our foot, um, which is the base of the toe and the bone structure that gets locked in place. And the ankle can actually go up and down from there while it's locked. And if we play it in slow motion, you'll actually see that working. That's why we have to specify the ball as well. Um, and the number of bones in that limb, pretty standard stuff, two for a normal human. So we set that. Uh, I might add some exposed, I might expose some of these so you can change the values at runtime if necessary. But for now, it's just like this, very nice and simple. And then we have the IK nodes. So let me see if I can show you, uh, let's have a look here. I'll put this in slow-mo again. 
and I'll turn off the gizmos. Um, turn off the debugging. Okay, so you can see that the foot gets, the toe gets locked and the ankle is allowed to actually rise up, which is really important. Um, and obviously once it gets to that extension mode, it just lets it slide. You have to, there's, there's no other way um, to deal with it. You're better off letting it slide than ruining your pose. Now, originally I did put in hip shifting, so shifting the hips downwards to try and compensate. However, I found this didn't benefit in any way. It just became really boppy. It didn't work as well as it did with the stride node. So it kind of works with the stride node, but in this case, it just didn't work. So I just removed it completely, not even worth having as an option. Um, but that also just makes things nice and simple. So let's have a look at how I am deciding when these are triggered. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, I mean, this is my way of doing it. As I said, how you decide what those booleans are for left and right foot lock and when they become true and false is, is up to you. But my way of doing it is you make a base animation blueprint for all of your characters. Since I'm only testing here, I don't have a base, it's just one. But in your base class, you have this left foot lock and right foot lock booleans and whatever you, else you might have in a base animation um, graph uh, cl uh, job uh, class. And you will inherit from that class. Now, because you've inherited from that, class for all of your animation nodes, uh, you can now cast to that from your notifiers and just set that value. So you can see here, I've got these notifiers, which I've only done in Blueprint for testing. I will probably make some in C++ that rely on timers, but for now, they basically have two, bull uh, two variables. Is it the left foot and are we locking it or unlocking it? Um, and we basically, when it's triggered, we are setting those values on the animation graph here. Uh, so let's have a look at the animation itself. So I'll go to the jog animation. And you can see here, I have set up these uh, notifiers. So you can see if I click this one, is it the left foot? It is the left foot. And is it locked? No, it's not. So this is unlocking the left foot, this node. Then this one is uh, the right foot and it's locking the right foot. So you can see when it's planted. So when it decides to lock is actually up to you. So if I go to the back, which is actually the side because characters in UE4, I don't know why that is that way, but you know, you could probably lock it like there, but since we're locking the toe, the ball here, that's not a bad spot. You see, we're unlocking there, we're locking that foot there and about there, you know, the foot, the toe is about to come up, we unlock it. You've also got to consider that I've put a 0 0.3 second timer. So it's not going to um, be fully unlocked until, you know, somewhere here. So you have to, have to consider that with your uh, notifiers. Now, how I'm probably going to do this for the final result and the, and the notifier that I'll ship that's made in C++ is you won't have unlocking and, and locking notifiers. You won't have that checks box you'll basically just have um, a timer. So you lock it and it's based on a timer. This means that if you switch to a different animation and you don't have something to unlock it, the foot won't get stuck locked. That's the current problem with these notifiers that I've made here. Um, so instead it'll be a timer, uh, you know, 0 0.5 seconds, whatever, whatever the time is probably less than that. Um, and you just set one for each. So you'll only have, you, you, you'll take out every second one of these and just set a timer. Um, you could do uh, notify states, but it's kind of a waste. You don't really need that. And also it's gonna have the same issue because if you don't trigger the end of that um, notify, by the time you blend out of the animation, it's gonna stay locked. Uh, you might think, well, why aren't we using animation curves? And again, I said animation curves get blended together between animations and it kind of defeats the purpose. You might use animation curves if you're using uh, foot locking for like a turn in place system or something else, but that's a different topic altogether. And um, that's not the intention of this initial build, um, but I probably will add in examples for, you know, turn in place, um, you know, uh, start and stops and all that sort of stuff. So that is basically the beta foot locking node. Uh, it's very simple, um, yet quite effective. And yes, it will be included with Motion Symphony and Strider and potentially be a very low price standalone plugin itself. Um, 
I want to make it easily accessible. It's quite powerful. So yeah. Uh, so thank you for watching this quick informal dev update. Uh, if you want to try it out, um, you know, head over to the GitHub and download it. If you don't have access to the GitHub, you need to send me your invoice for Strider. Uh, it's not, it won't be available yet for Motion Symphony users. That will come when it's, it's finished. So uh, yeah, if you feel like having a go with it, have a go and thank you for watching. See you next time.